If I was to tell you that a rock appeared in this room that I'm filming in, from nothing, you would say that I am not a valid source of information, that I've bought into a lie. And the truth shall set you free! Welcome back everyone to Bridge the Divide, where I examine irrational beliefs, the irrational behaviors that often follow, and how we, with education, rationality, and reason, can bridge the societal divides that they create. Today, we're going to take a special look at a special video from that special kind of theist, Matt Powell. And in it, he has what he purports to be a sobering and powerful message for atheists all around the world. And while I'm not sure that anything from Matt Powell will leave me wanting to stay sober for long, I'm sure it will be very interesting, if not entertaining entertaining to hear exactly what the great value steward has to say to atheism in general. Look what I can do. The floor is yours, Maddie. If I was to tell you that a rock appeared in this room that I'm filming in from nothing, you would say that I am not a valid source of information that I've bought into a lie. You know, that may actually be the first, albeit somewhat, honest thing I've ever heard you say, Matt. And I say somewhat because concluding outright that you're not a valid source of information simply because of a single claim you're making doesn't actually follow. Claiming that a rock suddenly appeared out of nowhere in your office is not equivalent to, say, claiming what the weather is outside. It's always important to take each claim individually so as not to wind up assuming the truth of one and then inadvertently begging the question on the next. Yes, were you to make the claim that a rock spontaneously appeared in your office, there would be very little justification to accept that claim on face value. Obviously, we would need to investigate the claim further so we could get more information to determine if your conclusion that the rock spontaneously appeared is in fact justified. This general process pretty much holds for all claims, and the more extraordinary the claim, the more extraordinary the evidence should be. And to that idea you had about buying into a lie, that would really only potentially apply to the scenario in which someone Someone else made a claim that a rock spontaneously appeared in the office and you accepted it without doing any further investigation. Just because the claim that a rock spontaneously appeared in the office is highly improbable does not mean that it did not actually happen. But on the flip side of that, just because you might find the claimant to be trustworthy based upon your experiences in the past says nothing about whether or not they could be mistaken or even lying. It's important to remember that one standard of epistemology must remain consistent for all claims regardless regardless of their nature. Otherwise, you risk opening yourself up to fallacious reasoning and becoming easy hey. prey for charlatans, grifters, and con men. Well, that's exactly what atheism is. That's a bold statement. It's the idea that everything could have appeared from nothing with no God. I just wish that for once in his life, Matt could represent atheism accurately. I mean, he's been corrected on it so many times that at this point, we're justified in concluding that it has to be deliberate. Nonetheless, I'll say it again for him. Atheism and cosmology have nothing to do with one another. Yes, what we collectively understand about cosmology can lend itself to supporting the non-theist position that the theistic claims regarding states of the universe that we have no access to are in fact unjustified and do not warrant being held as true. But ultimately, that's a cosmology claim. And atheism itself does not make, nor is it concerned with cosmological claims, because it's only stating that the individual who uses it as a self-identifier does not believe in the existence existence of a god or gods. Just as cosmology doesn't make any claims regarding the justification of god concepts, because that field is only concerned with what we humans have access to and what can be observed and or measured. These two things, atheism and cosmology, in and of themselves are mutually exclusive concepts. A full understanding of cosmology does not entail that the non-theist position is absolutely true, and the non-theistic worldview doesn't entail that the general scientific consensus on cosmology is absolutely true. If you really want to address atheism, Matt, then address it for what it is and address its justification. If you want to address cosmology, then address the direct evidence that we have access to that leads us to the highly predictive model that we hold to. Because to sit there and conflate the two like they're somehow intertwined is just intellectually dishonest. And while at this moment I'm only going to speak for myself, I can tell you, Matt, that my being an atheist is in no way predicated upon my understanding of scientific concepts. And I know this because I understood concepts like cosmology, evolution, and a variety of other scientific fields 
when I was still a Christian. The only difference between then and now is that I eventually came to recognize how I was only justifying my God belief with post hoc rationalizations and appeals to mystery in an attempt to reconcile the direct evidence that contradicted my belief and assuage my cognitive dissonance. That is a belief in magic. That's mysticism and sorcery. That is not science. And this right here is where I'm always confounded by Matt's line of reasoning and why his followers don't swiftly jump on him for doing this because he bounces back and forth between these absolute claims about atheism that in the end just wind up being contradictory. First, he falsely claims that atheists believe that everything came from nothing. Well, that's, well, that's exactly, exactly what atheism, what atheism is. is. It's the, it's the idea, idea that, that everything, everything could have could appeared, appeared from nothing, nothing with no God. God. Then, in the very same breath, he claims that atheists holding to that position entails a belief in magic or sorcery. That is, that a, is belief a belief in magic. In magic. That's, that's mysticism, mysticism and sorcery. sorcery. But the second claim implies that the atheist believes in magic, which is something itself, or sorcery, which of course implies the existence of a sorcerer. I am Wizzo the Wizard! Bow. What do you do? Magic. What's that? I can make stuff. Existed before the universe did, thus the atheist can't logically hold to the universe coming from nothing. It's moments like these that keep me on the fence between Matt possessing a general lack of intelligence and self-awareness, or him being a legitimately dangerous and predatory grifter who is more concerned with personal power than he is truth. And so I've actually asked certain atheists, would you become a Christian if Christianity were true? It's a trap! Well, that's a loaded question if I ever heard one. Obviously, because it assumes that if Christianity were demonstrated to be true, then automatically converting to Christianity would be the only logical option. And of course, that would also highly depend on what flavor of Christianity we're talking about. Because I seriously doubt that if Eastern Orthodoxy were demonstrated to be true, that Matt would simply cease being a fundy Protestant. And they will say no. Good for them, because that's the right answer. And that shows us that they're more about emotions. They're more about feelings and experiences instead of demonstrated fact. Okay, this is, and while I recognize that it is the understatement of the year here, a deeply problematic position. And it's made all the worse because within that stance, Matt is committing both a non sequitur and a composition fallacy. The question he's posing here is ultimately about justification. If Christianity were demonstrated to be true, would becoming a Christian be automatically justified? And the answer is, of course, no, it wouldn't be. Now, while it would follow that there could be no more atheists, as within the framework of the hypothetical, all humans suddenly have access to direct evidence of this god entity, thus rendering us all theists, the mere existence of a godlike entity does not automatically entail that that entity should be worshipped or even respected. I understand that we would all be better off without a needy little bitch like you around. And, while unconfirmed, I suspect Matt would hold to the exact same position that the atheist does here, were it to be demonstrated that Allah was the god that actually existed. Simply by virtue of certain aspects of that religious system, Matt would likely refuse to convert to Islam. He'd still be a theist, he just wouldn't be a Muslim. When we get into the dirty details of the Christian faith, like the hundreds of contradictions in the Bible, the existence of a system in which belief in the god that created it demands a fundamentally broken epistemology, or the very existence of evil at all when such a thing is rendered arbitrary and subjective by the very nature of the God category itself. If becoming a Christian under the parameters of Matt's hypothetical in any way demanded committing yet another appeal to mystery or some other logical fallacy to justify it, then the act of becoming a Christian is rendered a wholly irrational one. Now, while I will concede that there would probably be some atheists that would make such a decision based solely upon how they feel about Christianity, likely citing its logically unnecessary blood-soaked history and its various antisocial policies, you cannot simply compile all atheists together so that you can disregard those atheists who would not become a Christian under such circumstances because they recognize that if the Christian God were demonstrated to be true, then that scenario demands more investigation in order to determine if becoming a Christian would be an epistemically justified response. Look, if you're an atheist, there's no way to determine what's right and wrong. That was just a blatant lie. And it is a lie that is commonly espoused by that variety of Christians who count themselves as members of those particular denominations that are a little more concerned with control over others than they are if what they believe is true. There is definitely a way to determine what is right and wrong as an atheist. Atheists just don't often claim that what we view as right and wrong are objective features of the universe. So while we wouldn't be able to claim that anything is absolutely or objectively right and wrong, we can still 
determine a difference between the two concepts, even if that difference is predicated upon everyone agreeing to the same subjective standard. Morality in and of itself is conceptual. It's not a physical thing existing in the universe independent of all minds dictating what is and isn't moral. When it comes to establishing moral frameworks within human societies, the theist points to their holy book and claims that their one moral framework comes from their god, while the atheist generally points to us humans and claims that the various moral frameworks as evidenced throughout human history come from us. It's really just a matter of hierarchy. If a god entity were to exist, then of course it could claim what it wants to be moral and immoral. But if the entity doesn't exist, then the responsibility for that decision comes down to the next agent in line, and that's us, humans. And something else that Matt continuously fails to recognize in regards to his moral argument is that by virtue of the category that he places his god in in his worldview, then it is necessarily entailed that morality is in fact subjective. Matt's claim is that his god is the ultimate arbiter of everything and that nothing else exists external to it to dictate or constrain what it must or must not or can or cannot do. Which of course necessarily entails that any logically possible moral framework that this entity could impose upon any system it created would itself be subjectively derived from its own mind and arbitrarily imposed upon that system. This of course would render any appearance of objective morality from within the system as completely illusory. Because something cannot be definitionally mind independent and mind dependent simultaneously. Thus, the moral framework that Matt derived from his faith is mind dependent. It's just that in his worldview, the mind isn't his own, it's his God's. And as for the non theistic worldview, it's just the minds of us humans. Great Scott! I know, this is heavy. God or not, it's all subjective. But claiming that if a god doesn't exist, then the very conceptualization of morality suddenly ceases to exist as well is just flat out absurdity. And so everything is based on feelings. Remember, it's about a feeling rather than what fact is and what science has shown us and the things that we can know for sure. Yes, it's all subjective, and that means that moral frameworks can change at the whims of emotions, circumstances, or the general goals of the society. And even if Matt's God existed, that framework would still be whatever logically possible framework that God subjectively wanted it to be. Also, seeing as how the concept of morality is dealt with within the field of philosophy, I also have to point out that I find it truly hypocritical that Matt will readily appeal to science as supporting what he feels to be true about morality, an unmeasurable human concept, but then turns around and steadfast refuses to accept science when it contradicts other positions he holds, like the measurable age of the Earth or the measurable predictive models that confirm evolution. It's more about emotions. And so we're left with emotional experiences and just feelings that would tell us what to do if there is no God. And a lot of people are going to have a lot of different feelings. And so it's going to be nothing but chaos if we take an atheistic perspective of the origin of the universe and of our existence. So what he just said there is not entirely wrong, but it's also not entirely accurate. Yes, moral frameworks being entirely subjective does make the task of determining an agreed upon middle ground from the individual all the way up to the population, a Herculean one at best. And yes, as evidenced throughout human history, this can result in massive bloody conflicts. However, that fact does not render such an undertaking as impossible. One of the biggest differences between ancient civilizations and the modern modern age of today is the extreme breadth of our ability to communicate with each other. Distances, cultures, and languages no longer present the hard barriers that they once did when it comes to mutual understanding. Today's ready exchange of ideas at the speed of light has facilitated the vast majority of the population into basically getting on the same page when it comes to various concepts like morality. At minimum, such advancements have increased the visibility and by extension the global awareness of the positions of other people. And that really works to our species' collective advantage because the very very first step in solving any kind of problem is being aware that there is one. While ideological conflicts have been and may continue to be a major facet of the human experience, they certainly don't always have to be a dominating feature of that experience. So Matt claiming that this particular issue that human beings have been dealing with since we first started grouping up into tribes cannot be solved without an appeal to an external god figure is just a depressing lack of imagination and a wholly undeserved indictment of our species as a whole. And one thing we need to understand is that atheists actually have the worst statistics in the world for doing some of the most reprehensible things known to man. That is also a bald-faced lie. You'd think Matt's worldview would have something to say about that. 
there is approximately zero evidence to support the claim that there is a direct correlation between atheism itself and the varying atrocities that have occurred throughout human history. There is, however, mountains of evidence that shows a strong correlation between various atypical personality types and mental illnesses with those atrocities. They lead the world in school shootings. This particular claim, which is of course not something that is unique to MAD, but is swung around by virtually every major fundamentalist Christian reporting group, is not only completely unfair founded, as no such conclusion has ever been reached by any of the major psychological or psychiatric foundations that have studied the phenomena of school shootings, but it's also grotesquely reductive, as it diminishes the actual problems being faced by the individuals in our society, such as healthcare access, socioeconomic status, identity politics, discrimination, education access, and the increasing demands on parents in the face of a society that makes few allowances for them as parents, in favor of directing everyone's attention towards the one problem that was manufactured by Christianity just to validate their own faith. Now keep in mind, they only make up a small percentage of the population, yet they lead the world in school shootings. A citation for that ridiculous statistic that doesn't come from a Christian Fundy website or your own head would be greatly appreciated. I ask because I happen to know that no such statistic actually exists. But here's an idea. What say I play devil's advocate for a moment and concede for the sake of argument that that statistic actually represented reality, that the vast majority of school shooters were in fact atheists. Even if that were the case, that still wouldn't be evidence for the existence of a god or a valid justification for becoming a Christian. At best, if that statistic were true, it would just be evidence that young atheists need better and more ready access to support groups. Because apparently, living in a world where the vast majority of the population persistently diminishes their humanity and devalues their identities by constantly hammering them with psychological abuse and emotional manipulation at virtually every single turn seems to yield some long-lasting negative results. Now, from here in the video, we're going to skip ahead a little bit because it's essentially just Matt making the exact same unfounded claim, but this time in regards to drug drug abuse, and self-checkout statistics. All the while, he deliberately ignores the one major conclusion that virtually every group has come to who has studied this, that these issues are not about having faith or having a god. They're about having ready access to support and community. That it is the consistent presence of these things in a person's life that helps to reduce all three of these social issues, and not that they must believe a god exists or that the group that they belong to must be Christian in nature. In point of fact, there are a multitude of secular programs that have been established all around the nation that aim specifically to help people with these issues, and all without persistently subjecting them to or demanding that they accept ridiculous notions. The major problem here is that these programs typically tend to be underfunded, undermanned, and not readily accessible by everyone who needs them. So no, Matt, when your faith is what has a stranglehold on the nation and continuously eats up the lion's share of available public resources, does everything it can to stigmatize non-believers at every turn and actively lobbies against the very existence of such secular support and education programs, thereby reducing these groups to salvaging whatever they can from the scraps left behind, you don't then get to smugly point at your religion as if any of that was any kind of a justification for what you believe. So if you are poisoning people's minds, like telling them that they're fundamentally broken and doomed to eternal torment, unless of course they eschew their entire identity and autonomy and embrace an appeal to an external God figure that cannot be demonstrated to exist, and telling them there's no creator. Magic is real. We appeared from nothing. Just like a rock appeared out of nowhere, whole universe just appeared out of nowhere, folks. There's that contradictory claim again. When you get somebody to believe a big lie like that, that actually does affect their understanding of the world. Wow, the projection is strong with this one. Seeing as how telling people that something came from nothing is not what's entailed by atheism, nor is it what atheists do, and is definitely something that is entailed by theism and is definitely what theists do, as they believe that their god willed everything into existence from nothing, it's not atheists that are perpetuating this big lie that the universe is a result of magic. It's you and your ilk, Matt, that are doing that. We're going to go ahead and jump this next section because once again, it's Matt just repeating the claim, only this time he targets trans individuals because it just wouldn't be a Matt Powell video without some blatant transphobia and alcohol of all things. And then he goes on to claim that all of these things that he's mentioned are direct evidence of both the existence and influence of Satan, Satan on, on Earth. Earth. He even manages to subtly imply that it is the devil that is behind what science is informing people of. Like how the direct evidence in virtually every major scientific field that we have access to 
contradicts almost every claim in his book, which of course would also go to explaining his stance of anti-intellectualism as well. Come on, Matt, how do you ever expect to get any better if you actively choose not to learn? Because reading is what? Fundamental. That's right, children. You don't want to be proud to be an atheist because it's nothing to be proud of. I'm not proud because I'm an atheist. I'm proud because I found the courage to deconstruct, because I was able to find my way out of religious indoctrination, because I now hold myself to a consistent standard of logic and epistemology, all of which has, in turn, made me a better person. Being an atheist is just a bonus. And some of you atheists out there will say that Christians are hypocritical. I can't be a Christian because I'm not gonna be a hypocrite. Makes sense, given the level of hypocrisy you've shown here, Matt. I'd also tack on the blatant lies and anti-intellectualism as being good points too. Hypocrisy isn't even wrong if there's no God. Sure, it's not objectively wrong, but it does result in a reduction of one's perceived trustworthiness to others. And if the goal is to maintain a consistent and supportive social structure to meet one's needs, then not being a hypocrite goes a long way to safeguarding that. So subjectively, it can be perceived as wrong, if only by virtue of the direct evidence of what happens socially when you regularly engage in hypocrisy. So you can't even have a moral argument in this case because there's no objective morality to begin with. God or not, morality is still mind dependent. Therefore, it is still subjective. And then number two, just because certain Christians fail to live the Bible doesn't mean that the Bible isn't true. That smells vaguely like a no true Scotsman fallacy. And it also doesn't mean that the Bible isn't false. Until you can demonstrate that your God actually exists, Matt, that door is just gonna keep on swinging both ways. If I played Claire de Lune on the piano, and I messed it up. Does that mean that the author of Claire de Lune was a bad artist? No. And that would be a false analogy. First, because the composer Claude Debussy actually existed. Oh, Debussy. I love Debussy. Second, the sheet music and the instruments used to play that music also actually exist. Third, so long as the goal is to perform the music as Debussy intended, then there is an objective way to perform that music. And last, if you do happen to screw up the music intentionally or otherwise, Claude Debussy is not going to throw your ass into hell for all eternity. The concept of a god, the concept of morality, and the subjective experiences of human beings do not in any way equate to playing the music from the third movement of Sweet Bergamosk. Us Christians are fallible people. Yeah, meaning you could be wrong about all of this. But we're trying to follow an infallible book. <laughs> you serious? If ever there was evidence that someone didn't actually read the Bible, or at minimum didn't understand half of what he read, this would most certainly be it. Honestly, if I sat here and tried to list out every single way in which the Bible is profoundly screwed up, we'd be here forever. So we'll just let Matt's little claim stand on its own ridiculous merits, and I'll put a link to where you can view an infographic that parses out every single contradiction in the Bible down in the description. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and skip this last section because it's really just Matt claiming that his God exists, and then making a giant appeal to mystery to try and explain why humans just can't seem to understand it. Because you know, it not existing is simply not logically possible. <laughs> Oh. And with that, we will conclude part one of this look at Matt Powell's response to atheism. And I think I can say, so far, it's been pretty much what we all expected it to be. But we will follow this up with part two, where I know Matt kicks things off with a look at the origins of life in the universe, which I'm sure will be equally, if not more, entertaining. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And be sure to leave a comment below. I love reading your responses, and those interactions help with the dreaded algorithm. Don't forget, March is Disability Awareness Month, a link on how you can support these important efforts is down in the description. And if you love scary movies, be sure to check out me and my filmmaker friends over at the Week in Horror podcast, now in our fifth season. Everything you need to become a channel member here, get yourself some official Bridge the Divide gear, an official Darth Dock and Squeak toy, or support the podcast is down in the description. Once again, thank you all so much for your continued support, and as always, be safe, be excellent to each other. And together, we can bridge the divide.
on the origin of life, we win. Christianity comes out on top. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say?